Welcome back. This what is the Pre with Pediatrics Healthcare Hour on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHDS. So. so, this is Peter, by the way, and you, you were right about to tell us about the weight fields controversy. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. This is the main issue that started all of the cascading problems with immunizations, um, which occurred starting in 1998. Uh, Dr. Alexander Wakefield, who was a physician in Great Britain, um, had published a study in the medical journal Lancet that showed that out of 14 or 15 autistic children, 90% uh, of them had antibodies to measles virus in their gut. And his proposition was is that with the rising cases of autism, that perhaps the MMR vaccine was the cause of the autism. Uh, of course, this generated a great deal of discussion in the scientific community, and everybody got a little more than a little concerned. Um, at the time, all the vaccines had um, uh, a mercury preservative in them, so uh, some people were concerned uh, that it was the mercury components in the vaccines, and some people were concerned that it was the MMR itself. And I clearly remember my involvement because I take care of a lot of special needs children. And uh, I was also concerned. So I actually contacted Dr. Susan Schmidt-Lackner at UCLA, who's the head of their autism program there. And she and I uh, did a small uh, study to look at that um, and discussed the, uh, putting in a grant to NIH. By the time we got to the rest of the material on our study, um, the, the larger studies had been accomplished that could not replicate Dr. Wakefield's results. In other words, the studies done here simply showed absolutely no effect whatsoever. So in light of the fact that Dr. Wakefield's study was on a small group and the possibility of just finding something erroneous is high when you only have a small number of yeah. children, they replicated it in large studies. They did some, one was done on 20,000, one on 40,000 children. Nobody could find what Dr. Wakefield found. Nonetheless, the entire public went crazy with it, and a lot of parents stopped vaccinating their children, uh, period because they were convinced that we were giving them too much mercury and that was making the kids autistic and they were convinced that the MMR was causing autism. They were convinced that there were too many new vaccines that, that they had not been given before. And this, to this day, has been the bane of all pediatricians' existence. Subsequent to all of this, it was shown approximately five years ago that Dr. Wakefield actually falsified all the results. He was paid $600,000, American dollars, by some drug company lawyers to um, falsify his results so that they could get settlements for the autistic children. That is amazing. I kind of want you, I want you to repeat that for our listeners because I'm, I'm actually always talking about, I mean, that's kind of a conspiracy theory, according to some, but in reality, that if, if you're saying that this actually happened this with these actually did professionals happen. that we, you know, the healthcare industry and our, our sick children and lives depend on are being influenced by money, you oh. know, by big pharma. Well, it wasn't even Big Pharma. It actually turned out that it was the lawyers for the children that did it. Initially, they thought it was pharma. Well, that was the first report. It was the lawyers for the children who had become autistic that paid him to falsify his results. This all came out in court in Britain to the extent that he was stripped of his medical license and thrown in jail. Wow. And... This was a big hoo-ha. Uh, this was almost unbelievable. Now, when this all happened, I said, yep, that makes sense because nobody's been ever, been ever able to show what he showed on that one study. It took another two and a half years for The Lancet to retract the article, which they did a year ago, January. They, they had never, ever retracted an article in its completeness, and wow. they did. They Published it, took, a, it took that long, though? Yeah, it took them so. a year and a half because they had to go through this whole editorial board thing. 
So, it was unbelievable except for one thing. I knew it was believable. How did I know it was believable? Because I had a personal experience when I was very young and just starting in science that corroborated the possibilities of these things happening. When I was in seventh grade, I did a science project for which I won a number of prizes in the local science fairs that was uh, about insulin-induced deformities in chicks. And what mm. I did is I injected insulin at days 5, 10, and 15 of gestation, and at 21 days when the chicks hatched, I recorded my results. Well, of course, I was a pretty young scientist, and I, I did the experiment correctly, except that I didn't examine the results correctly. But out of all of them, one chick hatched that was deformed. So what do we do with this deformed chick? Well, we contacted the head of research at Children's Hospital of Detroit then. This is now Children's Hospital of Michigan. And he said, we know, well, we need to bring the bird to us and we'll sacrifice it and do tissue studies. So we will tell you the results of that in a very short period of time. And we will be right back. This is the Prima Healthcare, Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.